Welcome back, everyone. Um, thank you very much. And I think we have another exciting two panel coming up. Uh, so uh, then our next panelist is uh, Alan Johnston, uh, who has over 30 years as a detective in the Metropolitan Police in London. Uh, and since 1998, he has specialized in both covert and overt financial investigation. Uh, it was a financial investigation operation Trident uh, in Jamaica. And uh, in 2009, Ellen assisted in establishing the financial investigation unit within the anti-corruption branch of the Jamaican constabulary force. Uh, since 2010, Ellen has been based at the FID, which is the financial investigations division where he has been overseeing uh, and mentored investigators in all facets of financial investigation. And more recently, he has been involved in the compilation of Jamaica's national risk assessment in relation to AMLT, uh, TF as well as other AML policy initiative. Uh, in coupled with extensive experience, um, Alan also holds a master's degree in international criminal justice from the University of Portsmouth, also has a BTEC professional diploma, and is currently uh, in financial investigation and he's currently studying for his PhD at the uh, University of West England under the supervision of the Dr. Mary Young. And Alan will, is here to share with us uh, this case on the disproportionate cost of implementation of the FATF 40 recommendation. Jamaica is a case study. Um, Alan, welcome and uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Richard. Um, I'm going to give everybody a break from uh, PowerPoints and I'm just going to let you drink in my beauty for the next 10 minutes as I, I talk to you. I first off like to thank the uh, GSDC for the opportunity to present to you today. And I'd like just like to make clear these remarks are made in a personal capacity. Well, the view here now is from the Caribbean and, and specifically Jamaica. Just looking at Jamaica, its key crime problem is its murder rate. In 2021, it had 1,463 murders. That was nearly 50 murders per 100,000 of the population of an island of 3 million people. By contrast, UK's corresponding figures were 594 murders for 60 million people. Crude extrapolation suggests the corresponding rate in the UK would be approximately 29,260. And I'll return to this figure in a moment, but I, uh, just hang on to that. Just talking more about Jamaica, in terms of the Jamaican economy, there's a number of pressing demands. And, and for ease, I'll take three of these key present ones. In common with a lot of countries, it has COVID to have a devastating impact on the country, heavily reliant on the tourist industry. The murder rate, as you can see, continues to be a challenge. And we're now starting to see environmental costs, persistent rainfall, landslips, all these are bringing new and additional costs. To tackle these, amongst other issues, requires considerable resources. Unfortunately, Jamaica is not a rich country in the recent past has had to obtain financial assistance from the IMF to address a debt to GDP ratio that in 2013 was 140%, although it's now 96%. Given this, their debt burden, Jamaica is frequently dependent on international aid to deliver the most routine of services. Such obligations do not come without conditions and there's frequent pressure to conform to the desires of a donor body. Jamaica Amanda, a writer Amanda Sives observed that the post-colonial Caribbean states remain both economically dependent and vulnerable to external pressures, uh, particularly from the um, proximity of the United States. I don't to that. that. Amongst thank all you very this, much. Jamaica has Tony to comply with the effect of global uh, standards and its compliance with these is, standards is important. Uh, and whilst there are recommendations, there are implied um, spreads um, if you do not conform. We know that under the recommendation, uh, 19 countries are advised by FATF to apply enhanced due diligence measures against those who see fit. A potential course of action puts tremendous pressure on countries to form the FATF's requirements. However, the UK had a pro rata role to Jamaica. I suggest that UK law enforcement will be focusing on more key elements of the FATF 40 recommendations. Same same for other countries. As well. And as a, as a said, Jamaica is um, not in that position. Um, Prior to looking at the impact of the implementation uh, of global standards, I want to look specifically at the efficacy of the FATF um, model this, to address specific money laundering and the compensation uh, of benefits of crime because I, um, these are expensive measures that Jamaica has introduced. Ron Pohl, using 2009 and, and data, calculated the global success rate of money laundering controls as 0.2% with a compensation rate of protected as low as 0.7. In other words, despite all these money laundering controls, criminals retain up to 99.9% of the proceeds. What we'd say is the reality of the description of money laundering promulgated by FATF with more complex 
Tax money trails and assets available to be confiscated is a long way removed from the Jamaican experience. For me, it merely reflects a dominant West narrative, assumed to be correct with any global in depth research being undertaken. This has important implications for a country like Jamaica, where the sun's generated not large and dissipated very quickly. Something brought out by some research in other Western countries, as well as our own recent NRA. Hasn't stopped the financial CFF, RFSLB, criticizing us for not doing enough stuff. Just sent two questions charges. which were sent but in. But if the money isn't being uh, I hope that you laundered can see in that them, way, I can also um, I, I'm yes, not sure I can how we can achieve that. Okay. Yes, I can it see does them. give the rise question, to the question if complying with the crime of global standards um, currently today, is the most no appropriate to be and effective means of using scarce resources to address money in Jamaica. As was noted, having been involved in Jamaica's MER response to Jamaica's MER, the response to the MER, the ICRG, CFF monitoring, the NRA, Canada, observe firsthand the amount of resources required well, this is a comment, in a country that can ill afford it. As with um, attempts to uh, arrive at a figure for the amount so of money I, I can read this comment the time and cost of one third. Okay, I can read the comments. In Canada, the Supreme Court refused to allow lawyers. But from close ups, considering involving thousands of hours of public and private sector time, anecdotally, I'm aware of at least one SID that looked at the fact of crime and ensured its legislation matched the requirements, despite more pressing domestic legislative concerns to ensure they didn't fall foul of these federal standards. And in Jamaica, in the last 15 years, we've passed the Proceeds of Crime Act, Terrorist Prevention Act, we've amended these. Yet our principal act to prosecute theft and fraud offences. In Jamaica's 1942 Larceny Act, which in turn was modeled I can read on the one question. 1916 Larceny Act. In other yes, words, yes. it's okay. over 100 what years old. What impacts, if any, hasn't does the global altered, why? Because it's a of priority and FAF by is more of a priority at the moment in Jamaica. Failure to comply with FAF is actually led to Jamaica being placed in the grey list and of the currently 23 of countries. Standards. And I think I would just say if Professor De Coca would also like to join us, then that would be absolutely fine. As an aside, we've got five of the 25 countries on the EU list of high-risk countries, which again means the Caribbean is disproportionately represented with approximately 20% of the total. Thank you. So, over to the solution for a country um, that has strategic um, and deficiencies uh, really in this structure is to place it on the grey list. Okay. The list that, as we know, Ask gives a clear indication that you may not want to invest there due to suppose strategic difficulties. Thank you so much. It affects the rates which Jamaica can borrow in international markets and gives rise to suspect of de risking, amongst a number of knock on effects. Apparently, this is called assistance. Given this little evidence of reported policy success in the West, with few criminals being deprived of their benefits, it's hardly likely to because of the dynamism of what is happening internationally, of many global um, sums you may include states like non leaders like America moving their way from the United the Nations uh, General Assembly, given which was supposed to be where you know uh, these rules are supposed to be developed. In the first so, more specialized organizations what does like Foncitra, which is the Commission on Trade Law, which is smaller with 40 members, and then you have the debates there, and then the same model laws and things come around. Regulations come out and then they take it back to the alone, General Assembly, fines for uh, and then the General Assembly increasing. adopts it. Now, Some with figures I've seen show that in uh, the AML um, fines were why is that system a full shopping had worked for the non leader before? They didn't even want to go to the General Assembly. So they, they the use global the global AMS CFT, um, CFT uh, regime to um, become FFT. more concerned. And then self regulation the and naming and shaming former colonies that are not in the structural you know, position the economic to exist, system, rather than addressing the fact the system is not to the General Assembly. So, despite it's, the whole raft of measures that are in place by the FAF, and is the uh, non leader. What we need to do is examine who, uh, whether FATF uh, has ever intended to become the organization uh, to, it has. Uh, to, to generate it involved in law enforcement for 40 years, I believe there's a need for it. And then to get it to analyze as a global norm. That, uh, use this However, given my experience now, in Jamaica, right or wrong? the question I want uh, to pose to make a is whether FATF, my, as it currently the, operates, the is truly affecting all countries to and not the privilege to make up the membership of FATF. Of the global south, to the it's continually contending with that substantive evidence, sir, and it's not and a figure I like, but the 3-5% of the world's GDP is not that. I don't better. like the figure, but Thank if we you. accept it for the sake of argument today, 
The question is whether Thank all you. countries suffer money Thank laundering you, Incidentally, equally. there are two more questions. And the equivalent of 3 to 5% um, um, of all countries' GDP is laundered. We should probably read out so that um, if we take this, that all, this is are the there case, any attempts at then there has to, to be a greater representation of global South countries at FATF uh, at a decision-making um, level um, to reflect um, the universal the nature of the problem. We not find ourselves we're in a position where we've got a global standards organisation that disenfranchises 70 5% of the world's population from its decision making. Um, so, However, so please, um, and this is the argument I want to put forward here today, um, if the disproportionate amount is moments. laundered through the West, okay, thank when you, we see the thank membership you so and what you yeah, have to be, you have to be a, a significant question. financial uh, centre, it's, it's, uh, then we need to adopt a more nuanced approach to AML policy that reflects the true level of AML risk to a country. You may get Such mixed, approach with the Chris um, requirements, uh, increased requirements on the, on the hand, major financial yeah, elements in the government that are fighting members. For, uh, but it would ensure that the global South uh, countries are not hand, forced to introduce unnecessary Nigeria, wholesale um, measures the that, um, that these countries can is, ill afford. Uh, not very organized, what I will say is ultimately, FATF is a solution to a problem. Um, but I would ask, we, when it comes to the can it be the solution stage, to a problem when, um, um, and I would contend this, we don't fully understand the problem in the first there place, be which means potentially uh, whatever is deployed to tackle it work together, is both inappropriate uh, NGOs, and effective. Et cetera. Professionalization, um, etc. Because to make sure at the moment that, the concentration um, seems to be positive. What um, is uh, norms are, are, are pushed? I'm more On interested the other in hand, how it's laundered and who's laundered it, because I think that will give us a more effective answer. It, All and, I'm going to say is, as it's not clear the that the money laundering actually so occurs in the global more south in the manner it does in the west, uh, it, I think it's, it's time to it step back and revisit this whole notion so the that one size fits all. That, that is how I would like to in conclusion, there needs to be a discussion about the um, yes, adoption thank you very of a more much, Anthony, informed um, uh, system Professor of AML control that reflects the needs of all countries, not a select few. Taking Jamaica as a case, we just Please simply cannot afford uh, to implement a, set, uh, a system Tonyo, whose uh, efficacy, its effectiveness, uh, its efficiency, for me, you. has never, um, ever I just been fully proven. And I thank you. I, I hope I didn't rush too much um, and hope I finished on find time. A way thank of you very much. Itself at the forefront thank you. Thank you very much, Ellen. I think uh, given That's the interruption the and everything, you finished so one, two problem. minutes before the allocated time. Because we time. cannot 100% um, fault Thank you very much. I think this is a very, from, very informative. Uh, the global and, uh, north. Uh, Actually, it fits they set these very standards much, according to uh, what the theme they do, I think that's been coming to. since the morning. However, we um, need to bring revisiting in the our one side fits all. And, and I our, think uh, uh, interesting uh, when we talk of so money laundering policies and, and, and strategies, and uh, I think also the, the, the key Thank issue is context, contextualization. Um, the uh, question that I want you have to one policy is, and, and it's is expected to solve all the problems in every African country. Representation and, and thank in, you very much Africa for bringing that up and that looking forward to furthering that discussion during I, the q and I, I think it's important not to um, on, 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 on the country membership. Um, it underestimates the impact of uh, if it's our bees, uh, the regional Tajikistan, bodies regional bodies, taking Isabla, any role Jabba, in helping Jabba, to improve the um, capacity and for, for African North African uh, countries, uh, men countries, or other um, agencies, their voices are Africa invited into the process implementation in order to bring NFC. balance. Uh, I'm sorry, Connie, and I think often you those just have to wrap up now. May yes, not we are used totally fully. out of time. Okay, and then yeah. in so, addition to uh, that, just wrap up some of the biggest successes that we've had, so to wrap it all up, um, there is hope was outside of if, if and the outside of membership that we called to the table we, uh, and we look where, into where, these where issues and we ask how do we go about this I believe that convinced the decision makers be even though we were not and in that the way, so there these are standards, ways which I, I believe think it's important they're not all wrong South it's just a matter to consider, of especially using adapting the, the capacity the relevant, at, at uh, this event in the global to South. build the data to make a compelling case Thank you so much, to change um, standards Connie, um, so that they for, meet the integrity objectives of Africa. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so, so much, um, all the panelists, Connie, Anthony, and, um, and also Professor. And um, I think we are looking forward to the rest of the sessions for today and also tomorrow. I'll hand over, uh, I'll hand back to the coordinators of this uh, program. Thank you.
Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Um, I've actually got a problem with my camera at the moment, so I will log off and log back in shortly. Um, but I'd like to just invite uh, Mr. Richard Chellin to come up so that he can um, introduce his panel and the next session. Thank you.